we're going to take a look at using charts inside of Excel VBA. Uh, and so here I have a small data set. Um, I have six sales regions. Um, this is for the 2015 year, so each month in 2015. Uh, and then this is where uh, their respective sales. And then I also have the sales goals for those same months. So the first thing I want to do is just make a simple chart. I want to set it over here. Uh, and I want to just have a bar chart of the region's sales. Uh, and I'm going to ask the user which region they would like to do. One, two, three, four, five, or six. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new module. And this is just, uh, I'm calling it simple chart. It's just going to be a simple bar chart. And I'm going to ask the user which region number, so I need to store that. And then I need to populate it. Um, now that I'm asking them and I'm populating, I can expect it to be 1 to 6. I wouldn't expect it to be more or less. So I can introduce some simple error handling here. Uh, when the user enters the input box, I expect it to be between 1 and 6. So if it's greater than 0 and less than 7, then I'm just testing it. So I'll just stick up a message box right now. Um, if it's not between 1 and 7, then I'm going to deliver a message box. You must enter a region number between 1 and 6. So let's test this little bit of logic and make sure it works. So one, that works. 345, okay. So it appears to be uh, working. And I'd want to test 0, 1, and 6, 7 just to make sure that the boundaries were working correct. Um, but it looks like everything should be fine. Again, just some really simple error handling I can do. Next, I want to declare four more variables. Uh, I'm going to declare a chart object, which is a different data type, a chart, a series collection, and a series. And these are all different data types that we have not worked with before. But they work the same. So here's the variable name, and there's the data type. And now that I've declared the chart object, I'm going to set the chart object. And the chart object is just a container that sits above all of the ranges. It just kind of floats above all the cells on the worksheets and holds the actual chart. So the chart object is more the container. So to set the chart object, uh, since this is a different variable type, I have to actually use the word set. The variable chart object equal to, this is my sheet name, my code name, uh, chart objects.add. And then I need to specify where the left side is going to be where the top is going to be the width of the chart object and the height of the chart object. So I should see it start right up here. Let me change that to J2. And I'll test this. And I can see it starts at J2 for the top. It starts at J2 for the left. It's 300 wide, and it's 100 tall. I'm going to give my chart object a name. So the name will be the string region. Then I'll use the variable region number to get what the user input. And then finally, sales. We'll go at the top. Okay, now that I've got my chart object created, I need to create my chart. And the chart is the actual uh, thing that you see. So the pie chart, the buyer chart, the line chart, whatever the case may be. It's the visual representation of the data that sits inside of the chart object. Now that I've set my chart, I'm going to declare several things about my chart. So I'm going to use a with statement to make it a little easier. So with my chart, 
And if you open a with, you have to end a with. So my chart has a legend. My chart has a title. Sales for region string, and then we'll pin the region number at the end. And then the next thing I need to do is set my SC1, my series collection. And then set my series. So when we're looking at a series collection, a series collection is the group of data that we're going to chart, and a series is the individual piece of data that we're going to chart. So in our scenario, if we were to choose region one, so if we look, we have the chart object, and that's this thing that moves. It just kind of floats above the ranges. That's the chart object. We have the chart that goes inside of there, and the chart is the actual thing that we see. It's the visual representation, so the bar graph, uh, the pie chart, those kinds of things. We have a series collection, and that's the group of data. So this is a series collection. It's a group of sales numbers. And then each individual item that will get charted, each individual piece of data is the series. So you're really just working with these four things when you're working with a chart. Now with inside of that series, we need to uh, declare a few things. So we want the name. This is going to be closely tied with has legend. It's going to be part of the legend. Uh, so this name, we're going to start at A1, which is here. We're going to offset by zero comma region number. So zero, no rows, region number would be the number the user typed in. So if the user typed in two for region two, it'll offset by zero, two, one, two. That would be the name for this series, region two. The other thing we need to set are the X values and the Y values. Uh, and with the X values, uh, we're looking at the horizontal running across the bottom of the chart. Um, those will be our months. In this example then, that would start with A1 and it'll offset one, zero, to get here for the first. And for the last series, the last piece of data in that series, it'll start at A1 and it'll index L down to here, essentially selecting that as the X value across the bottom. For the Y value then, we want the sales data to be selected. So in this scenario, if we, um, the Y value would be a, a range of ranges again, it would be A1. From A1, we're going to offset one comma region number, so one row by the region number. So if they put a three for the region number, one, two, three would start there as the top left. And then the bottom right is that same uh, dot index L down, essentially selecting that for the Y values. And then the last thing we need to tell the series is how, uh, what kind of chart we want. Uh, Excel column clustered, I believe that's a bar chart. So let's take a look at what this will look like. So when it runs, it looks something like this. Uh, I want to make that a little taller. So I'll just have to work with it a little until I get it in a, a way that I like. Um, let's go 500 by 300. 500 wide, 300 tall. What region, region four, that looks better. And I can see my months are across the bottom and my sales are going up the side. Um, now, one thing that uh, I can adjust here, notice that um, the lowest sale is greater than 100,000 uh, and the highest sale is less than 200,000. So I can adjust the, the, the scale here on the side and adjusting the scale is a function of the chart. So here under has title, has legend, uh, axis. So the maximum scale is 200,000. The minimum scale is 60,000. And this is for the Y axis. 
So now when I run it, I get a, a chart that shows the differences a little closer. Uh, now notice, so I can delete this chart, and there's the one I did before, there's the one I did before, the one I did before, and the blank one. So these charts will just keep stacking up because they, they sit on top. So I want a way to delete them. I'm going to create a new sub. And I'm going to delete them a little differently than we have in the past. So I'm creating a chart object variable, data type chart object. And then I'm doing a for each. So for each chart object in the worksheet dot chart objects, I'm doing a chart object delete. And then I'll just keep doing a next until those are gone. So there's one. And there's a different one. So now there's two charts there. I can, whoops. I can see there's two charts there. My chart object delete will just loop through them and delete them all. And they're both gone. And I'll just call this at the top. And if I try to do zero, there's not a region zero. I get my message. If I try to do one, there's the chart for region one.